What was the most shocking habit you discovered when you moved in with a partner? Story one. He won't clear the couch, he just sits down. Fresh folded washing, sit on it. Handbag, sit on it. Paper, sit on it. Was so tempted to leave a saucy plate on the couch and see what happened. Habit finally ended when he sat on a laptop. Story two. I visited the house of a couple of blind people once. They had a cat, and it meowed every time you approached when it was resting on the couch as a self-defense mechanism. We've also looked after a small chihuahua mix that loved burying itself in blankets when it was in the house. It wasn't smart enough to bark when you got close, though, so it's been sat on several times. In conclusion, you should train your clothing and accessories to meow or bark. Story 3. She sprints up and down the stairs. She just hates being on the stairs, so she makes it as fast as possible. It's insane to watch her calmly walk to the stairs, then just automatically start sprinting. Story 4. He and his roommates never took out the trash, like ever. Huge pile of full trash bags in the kitchen, almost reaching the ceiling, with trash in all the cabinets, too. Every great once in a while, they would rent a U-Haul to take it to the dump. So confusing to me, but I didn't know how to help them break the cycle. Nice guys, but sheesh. Story 5. My husband organizes something every day. But it's the most random box in the back of the closet or refolding his clothes. At first my thought was WTF, but now I realize it's one way he relaxes after a long day. He's adorable. Story 6. We would buy veggies, etc. And if it had the slightest bit of discoloration, not exaggerating, he'd throw it away. Also, he would peel like 8 million layers off an onion before cutting it, essentially wasting most of the onion. Story 7. I didn't move in with him, I just stayed there a lot and cleaned up his mess a lot of times. But he had pee bottles under the bed and I don't know why I didn't leave the moment I discovered it either. Ladies, please, please make pee bottles under the bed a deal breaker. Story 8. Not me, but my boyfriend at the time. I knew he was messy, but put it down to the fact he was living on his own. When I moved in with him, we started by deep cleaning his place. He was then absolutely shocked when he realized I expected him to clean and tidy regularly. Don't know what he was thinking, that we would just do it once when I moved in and then every six months? Thank God he's somehow improved. Story 9. My girl loves peanut butter so much, she has a tub of it next to the bed, and on the coffee table, and in her office. None of these tubs have lids, they are always open with a spoon in it. I'm concerned that the peanut butter might spoil slash go bad, but she says she eats a whole container every two weeks. I still love her like crazy though. Story 10. They didn't know how to turn on a stove, microwave, washing machine, or dryer. Then the one time they made dinner, I was so surprised and impressed that I didn't say anything when I found the takeout containers in the garbage. I feel stupid for not calling them out on it now, but thankfully it's not my circus or my monkey anymore. The habit was pathological lying and weaponized incompetence, which I only learned those terms after. I really thought they were the only ones to do that too. Story 11. The first time I lived with a woman, outside of my mom and sister growing up, I was shocked by how much fucking toilet paper they use. I mean, I knew that intellectually women have to use toilet paper all the time, and men only have to use it sometimes. But man, that difference was staggering. When I lived alone, I'd buy a 12-pack of toilet paper and no joke it might last a year. Sometimes I would go days without using the toilet paper at home because I'd do it at work or at school. Then my girlfriend moved in with me and it was all gone within minutes. Twelve rolls vaporized. I bought another 12-pack, gone before I got inside the apartment. Literally evaporated in the car on the way home. Costco membership, 48-pack. That lasted two days. Are you building a fucking mummy or something? I was asking. My toilet paper budget has a comma in it. Story 12, every single thing involved her parents. I found out years and years later that every argument, discussion, comment, etc. was fed to her parents. Every time I'd make a decision, she'd consult with them and provide their unsolicited input. Things like my career moves. My personal favorite was when things ended how it came out that it was financial abuse for her to contribute half her income to household bills the first few years. My contribution was easily 80% plus. That was early in the relationship. Within six years, I paid for everything. It was such a sore subject for them, I heard about it at least a half dozen times during the initial part of the separation process. Over time, I also ran across super weird shit like official printed documentation about how poorly I loaded the dishwasher with pictures. I could only assume this was for some bizarre custody fight she expected. There's a lot more, some of which I'm still mentally unpacking. Story 13. He doesn't change his bed sheets ever. He thought the only reason I change mine regularly was because of periods, so... Yeah, he thought men just doesn't have to change bed sheets. 
ever. Now he changes it regularly, but damn, that was a wild thought. Story 14. A severe addiction to scrolling Facebook. So bad he would scroll while driving. The instant he would open his eyes, he would grab his phone and open the app all day long. It baffled me. Story 15. He literally undresses as he walks around the house. Like I will find socks in the living room pants and the dining room t-shirt in the kitchen. My husband also grew up with a stay-at-home mom who did everything for him and his siblings. Laundry, cleaning, cooking, etc. Literally, the one thing she did not do was put their neatly folded clothes away in their dressers and closets. Some of our biggest squabbles have been over the fact that yes, he is getting better at picking up after himself. But he does it in the most infuriating way. Dirty clothes end up right next to the laundry hamper. Dishes and garbage end up on the kitchen counter instead of in the sink and garbage can. As far as shocking habits go, I will take this one happily. Story 16. She was a baker, would make all kinds of delicious treats, usually using multiple mixing bowls, utensils, and small appliances. Would not even rinse them until days later when the batter is dried on like cement or had started to mold in the blender or on the hand mixer or whatever. I swear when I explained if you rinse them right after to get the majority of stuff out, it made cleanup 10x easier. She literally did not believe her until I baked something and showed her how easily the still wet batter got rinsed out of the bowl. She would spend literal hours scrubbing cemented on batter before then. Story 17. She clips her toenails and just lets them fly wherever and land on the floor. It's disgusting and really weird considering she's an absolute freak about cleanliness in literally every other aspect of life. Her excuse is that Robbie, our robot vac, will eat them. I hate it. Story 18. An ex of mine was so lazy that the five-minute drive to Walmart was too much. So he would grocery shop only once a month, stocking up on tons of stuff that inevitably goes bad before the end of the month because he couldn't finish it all and packed it all in the fridge very messily, wasting food and money and making a mess while he did so. It wasn't the nail in the coffin, but I was starting to want to end the relationship around when he accidentally knocked a bowl of old popcorn that he had left next to the bed, onto the floor, and tucked in saying he would clean it up tomorrow. I cleaned it up when he refused. Story 19. He was polite, clean, smelled nice. We took turns cleaning and doing laundry and whatnot, but he was very sweaty when he slept. I am the polar opposite, but couldn't stand being cuddled and getting sweat on me through the top sheet. He got offended when I explained why I wouldn't cuddle at night. And then the eating. Dear God, a grown-ass man that wouldn't eat anything except pizza, cereal, and fried chicken. I could make any other food I wanted to without issue, but he outright refused to eat anything other than those things, and not just any pizza or chicken, but specific brands, restaurants. It was just awful. I made banana bread one day because he said he didn't mind bananas, and I had bought too many at once. He got home while the loaves were still warm from the oven. He turned his head and stuck his nose up like a toddler refusing to eat. I threw the loaf at his head. Shockingly, he wanted to stay together and was hinting at proposing a few weeks later. I left him. Story 20. My ex had big fingers that wouldn't fit in his nose, which he was always picking. He would use tweezers and he'd scratch the inside of his nose, causing it to bleed. He would leave his boogers everywhere in the bathroom, the sink, the shower, wipe them onto the rim of the trash can. When I broke up with him and he moved out, I was finding bloody boogers all over my apartment for months afterwards. It was so damn disgusting. Story 21. He automated his workday morning routine. No deviations even when there's an obvious issue. We'll respond to verbal stimulus. But no communication should be considered accurate because he's still asleep for about a half hour. So yeah, if we wake up at the same time, I'm ready to talk and plan and joke, and he is doing the routine. If I impede him, he will mess up his routine and possibly forget to change into pants. Story 22. My ex-GF would never close the cabinet doors she opened, reseal food packaging, like press-to-seal closures or twist ties, turn off lights after leaving rooms for extended periods, or cap the toothpaste tube. She would also lose her keys every 20 seconds. In her defense, she was hot. Story 23. Not a deal-breaker at all. He's very clean, I'm lucky. But he hates using the dishwasher. It's like he doesn't trust it or something. He does all the dishes by hand, even when we're tired. When I use our dishwasher, he's skeptical I love him dearly, but it's so bizarre. Story 24. My partner would wipe his boogers on the outside of his car, and then my car. I noticed one day there was crusty, greenish-yellow shit in the outside of my passenger door. Then one day I saw him pick his nose and wipe it on the outside of my car door while we were driving together. His excuse? The elements will clean it off. They did not, in fact, clean off the concrete-like boogers off of my car. 
It's been ten years and I think he's finally stopped. Story 25 She let her dog use the carpet as a toilet. Like she wouldn't take this dog out at all. The carpet in the living room is the only place the dog would go. The floor was spongy and wet. You could expect to find poop all over. She was totally desensitized to it. She wasn't willing to start taking the dog out, so the relationship ended very quickly after this. Story 26 My husband still doesn't always put his laundry in the basket. He puts it right next to it. We have been together nine years, so at this point it's now something I poke fun at. He at least helps with the laundry all the time without me asking, so I'm willing to let it go. Story 27 My husband, as it turns out, is a sociopath. We moved in together and one day upon opening the freezer, I found a bowl of heavily seasoned popped popcorn. I thought maybe he had an off moment and put it there by accident. Nay, this sick fuck pops popcorn, coats is in copious amounts of butter, lime juice, garlic salt, and parm, and purposefully freezes it so that the butter can re-harden before he eats it. WTF. Story 28. Hair on the walls of the shower. Not just the incidental lost hair or something, nope. Many of them, every time. It's like gravity turned on its side and she sleeps on the wall for a few hours every day. Story 29 didn't move in, but my first long-term high school boyfriend used chewing tobacco and used any empty bottle as a spittoon. First time he invited me in his room, I sat on his bed and felt heard a crunch. Between his wall and bed and all over the floor under his bed were full bottles of dip and saliva. Story 30. My partner met at 20, moved in three years ago. He stopped working in professional kitchens four years ago. Some health concerns. Landed a great desk job. He worked in fine dining restaurants as a line cook. He has little no idea how to cook. When I started staying over, I noticed this man lived off one meal a day, rotating between microwaved cheese quesadilla, literally nothing but cheese in it, canned chili, and store brand mac made with margarine. He may have some good knife skills, but literally he can't cook. I was honestly amazed, considering he worked multiple kitchen jobs at once for seven fucking years. It's impressive how much he didn't fucking learn. Story 31. Not a partner, but my old roommate didn't believe in food bacteria. Like, he would cook something and then leave it on the stovetop overnight and continue to eat it the next day. He did this frequently, and I'm not sure how he never ended up with food poisoning. Story 32. He would keep the TV on for background noise. As soon as we walked into the apartment, he would zoom over to the TV and turn it on and leave it like that. We inadvertently had a silent war of him turning it on and me turning it off all day. I finally realized it was slowly driving me crazy and had to explain to him that all the constant noise was hurting my brain and it was me or the TV. I didn't have a problem with the TV on while he's actually watching it at a normal volume. But him moving around the apartment with God knows what blaring from the TV was way too overstimulating. It was almost 30 years ago when we really didn't have the language to understand or explain sensory overload. He acted like I was just being controlling. It wasn't until we had our baby, who couldn't tolerate all the noise, that he finally realized it wasn't just a me thing. We don't even keep a TV in the living area anymore. There's one in the guest room and one in the master bedroom. He's much more respectful and understanding of my and the kids' sensory sensitivity. Story 33, first year living with my wife, we go on vacation one summer week. We just purchased our house and I wanted to save money on AC. I turned the AC completely off. When we got home, the house smelled like a tuna boat. I was running around the house gagging trying to find the smell. The smell was her maxi pads and tampons overfilling the trash. Had to air out the house for two days and stay at a hotel. Turned out she would do this before when she lived with her sister, another one. She would poop with the door open and thought it was funny. I did not. Story 34, he won't open mail. Any mail. He assumes everything is on auto pay and ignores it, throws it unopened into a paper grocery bag to shred it someday. When I moved in, we spent an entire day opening and going through about 20 grocery bags worth of mail. Yes, it was mostly junk. But we found out he had health care coverage he forgot about. He'd been avoiding the doctor thinking he didn't have insurance. Literally dozens of reward checks from Costco. A notice from his bank that they didn't have insurance info for the car he had a loan with them for, and they were going to start charging him for their own insurance. He had insurance, but just didn't update them when it changed. Tax stuff, car stuff, everything. For years. On that day, I took over mail handling duty. He got annoyed by me opening his mail at first, 
but I pointed out that I'm not willing to store a random bank statement for years when it's available online. I gave him a three-day window to open his mail after that. I'd leave it on the counter. He never did, so I went back to handling it as I saw fit. We moved recently and came across another box full of his papers that I hadn't encountered at the old house. I went through it and found about $600 in rewards checks from various credit cards and Costco. Some of them weren't expired somehow, despite being nearly a decade old. LOL. I will say that he's fairly neat, cleans almost as much as I do, and generally has his life together. He's just allergic to opening mail for some reason. Oh, also, he had a sock drawer full of unmatched socks. Whenever it got too hard to find a matching pair, he'd just go out and buy more. I went through and matched up all his socks. He had over 70 pairs.